This is your Tech News Briefing for Thursday, February 2nd. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Microsoft is taking steps to position itself at the forefront of artificial intelligence development. It's investing billions into OpenAI, the startup behind the viral chatbot ChatGPT, a company it first invested in back in 2019. But AI that can generate text and images is still novel and imperfect technology. So what can Microsoft get out of this partnership? And how are big competitors in the AI space reacting? Joining me to discuss this is our Microsoft reporter, Tom Dutton. Hi, Tom. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So we know Microsoft is investing billions in OpenAI. What else do we know about this partnership? Microsoft is really leaning in pretty heavily into this partnership as both a way to bolster its image and also to enhance a lot of the products that it sells. So on the one standpoint, just from a purely product standpoint, they are going to be incorporating this. And their CEO, Satya Nadella, has talked about everything from search, its Bing search engine, to uh, its products like its office suite, to any other kind of consumer-facing thing they believe that OpenAI and its technology can make a lot better and more compelling to consumers. And then just from an image standpoint, they've tapped into this very of-the-moment tech company that is so popular in the tech world, and it's at the forefront of this whole revolution or hyped revolution of generative AI that people really believe are going to transform almost every technology that we can think of these days. I'm sure a number of listeners have tried out ChatGPT. If you have, it's pretty easy to use. It can be pretty fun. But there are some limitations to the tech. Can you tell us what those are and what it means for Microsoft? The biggest limitation to the tech is that it isn't always accurate. So it very confidently produces a response to almost any question you put its way. Whether or not that response is factual based on verified sources is just not there yet. There's been quite a lot of criticism, even from the CEO of OpenAI, that ChatGPT and the various iterations of this so-called large language model technology doesn't always produce accurate results. It's baked into the architecture of how these things are made. And uh, if you're talking about, say, a search engine, which theoretically should be directing people toward accurate information, you would want, when you're asking a question, something to give you the correct factual response. If it's not going to give you that, if it's going to make something up or kind of hedge facts or in just some ways muddy the line of what a real human-derived source would send you, it's a huge problem if it's going to be a replacement for search. Has Microsoft at all commented on these limitations? The most that I have seen from Satya Nadella is in an interview at Davos a couple of weeks back. He was asked about this problem of, it's called hallucinations, when the technology just fabricates a response claiming it's accurate, but actually it's not based on any real source material. And his response to that was basically like, Yeah, we we recognize this as an issue. We view it as a solvable one. It's an engineering problem, and engineers exist to solve engineering problems. So he really downplayed the idea that this is something fundamental and flawed within generative AI or large language models. And hallucinations, these are when, you know, something like chat GPT tries to answer a question like, what's the fastest time a person has run across the Atlantic Ocean, something like that? Actually, let's do this while we're, do you mind? Do you want to find out what it says? This could be interesting. No, tell me what chat GPT has to say about the fastest time to run across the Atlantic Ocean. All right, let's see. Oh, they're at capacity right now. This is a real problem they have. I mean, there was a case a couple of weeks back where people were asking it who the CEO of Twitter was, and it was saying it was Elon Musk, which in and of itself was funny because ChatGPT is not designed to know anything after 2021. Elon didn't become the CEO until last year, so that was already kind of fishy. But then it was starting to claim all this stuff that Elon stepped down as CEO or that he was killed in a car accident. I mean, just completely made up stuff. And The CEO of OpenAI has said, this is an imperfect technology. It has a habit of doing it. And the question is, is this solvable? Is this something that the next generation of GPT or whoever else is building this tech will be able to solve? Or it's just like you always have to have some sort of caveat in any response you get from it that, listen, this just may not be right. And you should do your own research to make sure before you move forward with that answer. 
Well, here, now I'm on a, I, I was able to get into chat GPT. So let's see if it can answer our question. Thinking, thinking. This is of course another issue with chat GPT, which is that it can just take a really long time to turn out a response. And so if you're trying to be a replacement to Google, which is a pretty much like automatic thing, you really gotta not have these problems. Oh, here we go. No human has ever run across the Atlantic Ocean as it is a vast ocean. And it is not possible. And then it's a network error. So I guess the problems exist beyond just being factual. Let's talk about some of the competition in this space, because with Microsoft making such a big investment, I wonder who's concerned about this? Who feels like they might be falling behind because of Microsoft's investment in OpenAI? The most obvious one in this case would be Google. There's been a lot of discussion publicly and internally at Google over whether they've kind of missed the boat on this generative AI revolution. And the reason that it's so kind of flagrant with Google is because they have done more than almost any company to advance this technology. They acquired this company called DeepMind, which was really at the forefront of large language models and generative AI. They've been working behind the scenes to build out this technology, as Google likes to say to people, the T in GPT, which stands for transformers, that whole technology was invented by DeepMind and furthered by Google. So in a world where chat GPT or GPT-3 or 4 or whatever other version of this technology poses some sort of a real threat to search, then yes, Google is arguably in a rough spot because they have not been as aggressive as OpenAI has been in terms of releasing this technology widely to the public. All right, that's our Microsoft reporter, Tom Dotan. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Thanks for having me. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.